things in the queue. So this is about the tooling we get out of the box. So for us, when we implemented scale, um, we wanted to bring in something in this uh, environment that looks and feel quite similar and just extends this to the next phase where I can see my teams in context and I can pull from this list of items selecting for development, create uh, a plan, visualize dependencies and, uh, and take it from there. So from here, I can, can click on at scale, but I open it up in a different tab so we can jump back and forth. Uh, and it gives me a view like this, where we have the teams now working together uh, on one dimension. And on the other dimension, we have the sprints in the next PI that we want to plan. And in this case, we're also visualizing uh, the teams working in the, this, uh, this uh, art. And then we have a couple of external dependencies to an external team and a shared services team. So this is the clean slate for, uh, for a new uh, uh, increment plan. And in the tool, we added a, a, a UI that's similar to, uh, to uh, what we have in other parts in Azure DevOps. So we wanted to make it easy to pull from the queue that we have in the Kanban board. So here we see the six items that hopefully are the same as in this list here. It should be in the same order because this is the desired order of delivery from the product owners. And then the idea here is that now each of the team gets to commit to uh, to the different items and we create a plan. And we, we use the tool just by uh, dragging from uh, from the, the list and it will pull a card from the queue. Um, and essentially we can continue to do this until we empty the queue. So I'm just going to do this uh, randomly right now. Um, but it, it again, a simple tool that is, should feel very natural to use and, and just uh, lets you focus on what you really want to do, which is um, laying out the order of delivery, um, taking ownership of, of each of the individual features. And then we continue with identifying um, what is required to do this in a successful way. So let's say that uh, in order to, uh, to finalize uh, international flight listings, we need to first finalize localization support. And perhaps by making it a bit more interesting, maybe it's the green team that does this, and maybe this team is doing this one instead, just to, to make sure that it's uh, a little bit more interesting. So then maybe we want to visualize a dependency between these two teams. And in this case, if we drag a card, that's a dependency uh, successor for uh, uh, another feature to be delivered. Uh, we can drag and drop like this and it creates a dependency. So uh, again, super easy to, uh, to create uh, these uh, uh, relationships and the red strings that we used to do. And maybe uh, the board will look something like this when, when we're finished. And we can use this to, uh, to identify issues like OK, this Contoso club card item looks like uh, it has a dependency that's a little bit wrong. So possibly we could say that, OK, let's move it and discuss with the blue team if, if perhaps they could um, do things in this order instead. So after working together with the, with the teams, we hopefully get to, uh, to create a plan with, uh, with the features we're committing to, uh, the de identified dependencies, uh, put the cards in the right order of delivery. If we identify, let's say, uh, blockers, then we can also add them to the card uh, directly here or other dependencies. So if we don't have work in the queue that we identified during planning that we, we need to have, like a new uh, test environment, spelling like, uh, I don't know, I was told I should get one of these uh, developer keyboards with the high keys, and it's really nice, but it's really almost impossible to type on without typing at all keys at the same time. But here goes. So uh, if we identify a dependency, let's say to uh, to uh, to finish, uh, uh, I don't know, the email ticket thing, then we can also bring in these dependencies and add those as dependencies, just like we can to events if we want to highlight uh, 
uh, milestones like a, like a release, then we could put them in here as well. And potentially, if we, if we want to visualize the dependencies, we can do it like this as well. So this is kind of what the tool is is targeted to do to to bring this extra dimension into Azure DevOps. So we have a solution for the program board. Uh, we have a way to visualize uh, how the the teams work together over time, and then we also added tooling to uh, to support objectives management so you can identify the the objectives um, using yet another work item type so if you uh, if you come up with objectives uh, let's say at the team level while you discuss things you can add it here um, set the plan business value and then you can even if you if you feel it makes sense associate um, objectives to certain features and then we get some some tracking information here as well on on how uh, things are going um, to help us assess if we are closing or getting closer to achieving uh, the goals. Um, I'll move to a previous increment. So just to to take a look at how data looks like if we do this. Um, uh, if we've already done this. So this is also a thing that we think is, is important to be able to do, to jump back and forth between different states in Azure DevOps. So now we can, can look at, okay, this is the, the board and what it looked like um, in, the, in the first uh, increment here. And here we see some roll up values on, on the status of the user stories and so on. We can see that some of these items are associated with a with an objective and at the objective hub we can can now see the the outcome of of what we uh, uh, planned and delivered uh, tool for for managing risks this we can do in a kanban board if we want just add a work item type for the risks and create a board um, but we, we added it here so it's in context to make it easy to use Matthias, yes can i just ask you a question is it possible to to zoom in, zoom in and zoom out to show, show more or less details in this board? Uh, uh, she should look like this in in the dependency planning, right? Red, red strings all over the place. But yeah. I, I I understand what you mean. Let's say that we have uh, lots of cards. Yeah, we we uh, we did this feature here, so we could make the card small. Then uh, it adds to uh, a little bit to to get a good overview. Mm -hmm. We could right. possibly also. Uh, if we don't want to show all the dependencies to. Mm. Yeah, so there are ways to customize here as well, just like you would expect. Um, as well, as which type of cards you want to see on the board and so on. So again, um, the tool is intended to uh, to promote uh, the flow, make it easier to uh, to, to visualize work. Um, this is a tool that also can be used not only during planning, but during the, the art syncs uh, and so on to see how things are going. Uh, together with the uh, with the objectives view, we think. Um, we also have a, uh, a question, Matthias, on uh, whether you can com configure the cards, but I think you can quite. Yes. Enough. So yeah. so we have similar to 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 here. We can add uh, additional fields. So if we want to see, uh, I don't know, some value like this, we can add it on it. Uh, yeah, now got to add it to, to the form here. Um, so that's pretty much it. Um, 